So I, I have this Zen Toolworks desktop CNC machine. It is a Gen 1. And it came with the World's Worst Spindle. It, it was a DC motor that all you did was hook power up to it. And it it had a collet on it, and it sort of worked, and it mostly did. Um, and so I, I then went and, and 3D printed mounts for uh, a uh, Dremel tool. And nothing wrong with Dremel tools, but they're they're not the best. And I'm not a big fan of them because they're not really for long-term use. They're not really for using them with something like a CNC machine. It's something you just kind of do. Um, so I went looking around at what other desktop CNC machines uh, use now. And most of them, really I was mostly looking at other mill, use a, a brushless DC motor um, hooked into some type of pulley system uh, for a spindle that then runs into a shank that's on a collet that runs your cutting tool. Um, and, I, and I like the idea of that. It seemed to work really well, but... Um, Looking around the internet, you couldn't really just purchase just the cutting portion of it, just the collet, just the spindle, and the motor. You had to purchase either the whole machine that ranges about fifteen dollars, not fifteen hundred dollars, not or uh, or really that was it. Or, or I think I found one link that did uh, that sold just the spindle by itself, and it was like four hundred and ninety-five dollars, which I'm not too interested in purchasing either. And so I thought to myself, maybe I could just machine uh, this is what's going on here I've got a the general concept is to have that shank there and have four bearings on it on either side and then uh, lay a piece of aluminum to fit on that so it's a, it's a you know a cutting piece for it and then hook up to that uh, fist sized brushless motor there that I just picked up. Uh, this is small. I don't know what to do with my hands, that's why I'm doing that. I haven't built one of these before. Um, that there's a smaller one that I've actually built that's already on the Zen Toolworks machine. It has some skate bearings on it. Uh, it is a little bit smaller. Uh, the outside diameter of that piece of aluminum there is like 1.5, which is what will be uh, the final product of this thing here. Uh, that there is the actual piece that I've already made. Um, go through like a real quick disassembly of uh, taking off the belt and then pulling it through and then uh, showing either sides of the bearings. Um, it uses a GT2 belt, I believe is what it is. You can Google it, it was just on there. Um, but I'm just showing like uh, how the actual setup is once it's actually on the machine, which is kind of a weird thing to do seeing in the video that like you don't actually see it assembled until the end. Spoiler alert, there's one working at the end of this. Um, there's with that motor. The, the motor was expensive. I, I got it from Hobby King somewhere. It was, uh, it was like 80 bucks or something. That's expensive for me. I don't make a living off YouTube. And then uh, finally, like, uh, the general how it will be put together. And uh, for some reason, I'm going to take this thing apart like a million times to show you what's going on with it. Again, that's the skate bearing one. And uh, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to undo the collet on you to show that there's nothing inside of it. There doesn't really need to be anything inside of it at the moment. And, and now I'm screwing it back together. And uh, the proof that uh, I'm not the world's worst machine is that those bearings stay in there, usually. And and there it is. There you go. Uh, here I'm just doing some real quick measurements on this. Um, that's not a bomb on the left side. That's, that's actually a, a charger I was using to charge my camera cell USB charger. It looks terrible. Uh, it, it was, I'm doing some measuring here on the right side. Um, I'm going to do it wrong at least three times in this video before I actually, you know, measure it correctly. Um, and, and then I actually, you know, cut it after that. Um, there's a lot of incorrect measuring in here. Uh, and also this like the way I film this is terrible from the left side because all you can see is my arms 
and how hairy they are, and the fact I have a, a poorly mannered cat that sometimes, you know, scratches me. Because he's a dick. There we go. I, I think that was when I actually did it right. You're, you're going to get it. I don't believe in you. There it is. You got to point the right one because I marked it too many times. And, uh, and there I am, putting it back together again for some reason. There it is. Uh, the amount of time I'm putting it back together, putting the top out on it. There's the body, correctly measured this time. Uh, going on it, just doing a quick uh, check to make sure that all those bad measurements actually, you know, worked. So, so you can see it. I'm actually not sure why I put this one in here. Uh, it's me just setting up the machine to drill through it. There's actually not a video of me uh, drilling all the way through it yet. And there it is, magically with a hole in the center of it. I uh, lathed it a hole through it. It was actually a big pain in the ass. You'll see at the end of this video. And uh, there you go. It uh, goes all the way through. That's what she said. I'm doing a quick showing you of the bearing going on the top about where it'll go. Some not bad measurements with the old calipers there. 32 mils. I'm in the U.S., but I still use mills. And, uh, messing with it and check the depth of it so I know about how far to go. There we go. We're going to get it. 20 mils. That was a boring bar. Cutting and using the boring bar to cut into that. Kind of have the ubiquitous uh, sped up shot because uh, I don't think people are too interested in watching a dude. Uh, machine some stuff for like uh, for like 40 minutes it wasn't 40 minutes it, it took a hot second though it, 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 it took it took a decent amount of time longer than it would take a normal person and that's a harbor freight mill it's pretty it's pretty awful it's not not the best mill and and you know it's complaining about the price of all this stuff but i'm pretty sure that thing costs like 600 dollars without any of the attachments on it which is like you know way more than you know just purchasing uh, a CNC machine that works, you know, like the, that comes the way you want it. But not me. No, I, I'm going to buy a bunch of a bunch of junk and see if I can make other junk with it. There you go. Uh, this is this with it actually machined out in the center. Uh, there's a quick fitting of some bearings on it. Get two bearings in there. I'm sure here in a second I'll, I'll assemble it for no fucking reason. Call it in there. Make sure, make sure the shank fits. It does look it turn? It even turns. That's obviously not completed though. I haven't machined the bottom of there. I put the put the top on it. And uh, there should have been some more footage in there. I took a bunch of footage of me actually machining things, but I ended up not putting it in here because it makes the video run like really, really long. Uh, I am putting it all together. Two bearings each side. Maybe I'm not uh, uh, the best machinist. Is it there? The bearing popping out in the back. On the other side. Come on. You, you get it in there. And then finally with the shank going all the way through it. There it is. Uh, I realized something here in a second where uh, I need to put like a. Uh, like a ring on there, right there. So I gotta put that shank uh, back on the lathe and then cut it. I, I actually didn't take any video of that. I, I accidentally uh, didn't press record when I was doing it, and I only had one camera at the time because my batteries ran out. Um, put that top back on there. There you go. Just put it right on there for no reason. Just let everybody know that that's where it goes. That's where that, that's where that top goes. There's the line where it needs to be cut at. Right there, show you its ingredients. It's hard to see, it was dark in there. It's, 
It was already nighttime by the time and I ended up filming that. And uh, here's the final assembly for all of it. Like one million time, I'm going to put some bearings in there. Uh, like third time. Uh, in there. Because it's a real fiddly. They, they don't always go in when they're supposed to, you know? They, uh, they kind of... Uh, I wouldn't say I machined it super tight, but it was tight enough for there not to be any space in between there, so there was no run out. But it, uh, it, like, if it's even lightly canned, it'll get jammed up in there. There's the old ring going on there. Uh, I, I machined a groove on that shank. I know I just said that, but... Uh, and then you put the, the ring over the top of it that holds it all in place. And then uh, you got to make sure that that top fits on there. You know, nothing changed in between the last time I put it on there and, and this time. I'm going to tighten it up because it's uh, more or less complete now. But uh, there's a reference, um, you know, showing my age. What everybody probably came here for to actually see a brushless spindle working on an actual CNC machine. Uh, and again, there, there's the footage of the, the, the a sped up CNC machine. Because I think this thing took a total of like 20 minutes to cut or something. Um, it didn't... It, 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 as you can see, it's not centered. I was using... Uh, the old Inventables easel to uh, cut it, and um, it, it doesn't zero quite right yet. You know, I'm not really a CNC machine guy. I just built this thing, and it, it kind of, like most of the things I make, it kind of doesn't work super well all the time. So there it is. Um, There's another camera in there on the left. that will be a closer view of actually what it's cutting. Uh, it cuts pretty well to get to the point of this um it, it cuts pretty smooth there's not too much uh run out on there or or vibration coming out of it um and i think that helps uh, i took a page out of the other mill and actually uh machined some recycled hdp uh mounts for this thing to go for all this to go on to which is, is another video entirely um and it's using uh the smaller one that i showed you earlier it's using the smaller spindle. Um, I have to clean it off there. Uh, it runs at a medium speed. There we go. Here's a view of it. As you can see, there's not too much vibration coming out of it. Um, I had to put a fan on the actual motor, uh, which is just a broken off computer fan that I, I uh, 3D printed a spacer for it so it could fit on the, the bottom nub of that motor. Keep it cool. Um, if you don't do that, it runs a little bit hot, saying how a team is supposed to go on a quad copper. Um, it's got a little bit smaller motor. I would have to actually look up what the KV rating is. Whatever the other mill uses, that's a lower KV rating than that because, you know, why not make it more powerful? And that's cutting a Hackaday logo, which, you know, hopefully they don't ever see because, because you know, there's nothing quite like having a video of you showing off your brushless CNC spindle and it, uh, not cutting uh, the right spot. And then at the end of this video, it actually it actually crashes uh, on those bolts there, I believe, and uh, it fucks the whole thing up. So hopefully they don't ever see it. And really, this is it. I, I hope you appreciate the video. This is my first outing for this, so... It's, if it's really bad, let me know, because I'll probably keep making them anyways. You know, I'm really not looking to uh, get YouTube famous off of this. So thanks. Th thanks for watching. There's a good uh, outtake video here at the end of uh, my machining skills. Please enjoy.